Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Engineer J and we have this new discussion on influence line. So if you remember in our uh, previous videos, we talk about influence line for BIM. But if you missed to watch my previous discussion on influence line, I have put the link in the description below. Now, before anything else, let's review the uh, purpose why we need to draw the influence line. Now again, influence line is drawn in order for us to um, determine the behavior of a specific point in the beam with a live load. As we all know that our load changes its position, there is also a change in the reaction, in bending moment, or in the shear force at any specific point in our beam. So, influence line is also used to determine at which the load should be put in order for us to determine the maximum moment or the highest moment. So basically, influence line is applied if you are designing bridges wherein there is a, a live load. In drawing the influence line of thrust, basically, we will just be needing here our basic knowledge in statics. So we will be using um, statics or equilibrium equation. Okay, so let's now proceed directly to another example. We have and here we are asked to draw the influence lines for reaction at A and the force in member CI. So again, the first step here is to put a one unit load at the leftmost point or at the beginning of our beam. So in this case, we put our load at x equal to zero or at point A. So we put a one unit load at point A, okay, and which there is a or at x is equal to zero. But since we are um, looking for or we are constructing the influence line of the reaction at A, so we will be computing the value of Ay. Okay, since at point A we have two reactions, we have Ay and Ax. Okay, but since we only have a vertical external load, so basically we can say that Ax here is equal to zero. So, we will be computing for the value of A as our live load, one unit load, um, changes its position. We have other support here. We have support at E, which is a ruler. That is, we have only one vertical reaction. So, first thing we do here is to um, sum up moment at A, basically, so that we can get the value of A. And it's equal to zero, counterclockwise positive. So, we have um, negative AY. Take note the distance for um, every point is 3 meters. So we have 3 meters, 6 3 meters panel. Okay? So um, overall, we have an 18 meters span uh, truss. Basically, uh, for example, if this is a bridge, and we have an 18 meter um, span of bridge. Okay? So we have negative AY times the distance from E, we have 12, then plus the one unit load times 12, and this is equal to zero. So we have AY here is equal to one. So at X equal to zero, our AY is equal to one. Next, we change the position of our one unit load. So we put it at point B, and that we have at X is equal to three. So we want to determine the value of Ay, so we just need to sum up a moment at E again, it's equal to zero, counterclockwise positive, so we have negative Ay times 12 plus 1 times 9 is equal to zero, so we have negative Ay times 12 is equal to negative 9, so therefore Ay here is equal to three-fourth. Okay? So, where where our load is located at point B, or at x equal to three, our Ay reaction here is three over four unit load. And then, the same procedure, we move the value of one unit load at point C. So, we have here at x is equal to six. So, what is the value of Ay? So the same procedure, we sum up moment at E is equal to zero, counterclockwise positive. So we have negative 12 Ay plus one times nine is equal to zero, six is equal to zero. So we have here our Ay is equal to six over 12, or this is 
1 half. Okay? So at x equal to 6, ay is 1 half. And then we put our one unit load at point D. So we have summation of moment at E again is equal to 0, counterclockwise positive. So we have negative ay times 12 plus 1 times 3 is equal to 0. So we have ay is equal to 1 fourth. So at x is equal to 9, ay is equal to 1 fourth. Then our one unit load here placed at point E. So we have summation of moment at A is equal to 0. Okay, then that is we have AY times 12. That is negative uh, plus one unit load. Now take that we do not have a moment arm from point E. So we take that as 0. So we have AY here is automatically equal to 0. So at x is equal to 12, ay is equal to 0. And then we transfer our one unit load at point F. So we have our one unit load here now at point F. So we sum up moment at E is equal to 0, counterclockwise positive. So we have negative 12 ay minus 1 times 3. That is negative since our one unit load here rotates clockwise about point E. And then we have this is equal to 0. So we have AY is equal to negative 3 12 or this is negative 1 fourth. So we have at X is equal to 15. AY is equal to negative 1 fourth. And lastly, we placed the one unit load at point G. So we sum up moment again at E, and this equals to 0, counterclockwise positive. So we have negative 12 AY minus 1 times the location of 1 from E is 6. That is negative since it rotates clockwise about the point E. So that is equal to 0. So AY here is equal to negative 1 half. Okay? So at X equal to 18, Ay is negative one half. So let's now plot um, the value of our Ay with respect to the value of our x. So we have at point A or x equal to zero, we have Ay here is equal to one. So at this point, let's say that's our one. Then at x equal to three, Ay is three fourth. So let's say at this point, this is three fourth. And x equal to six, we have Ay is equal to 1 half. X is equal to 9, we have 1 fourth. And x equal to 12, we have Ay is 0. And then at x equal to 15, we have negative 1 fourth. At x equal to 18, we have Ay is negative 1 half. So um, this is now the influence line of the reaction at A. Okay, and this explains that if our live load or any live load is at point A, that would give us the maximum or the highest value of our Ay. But if our live load is at um, point E, okay, so that means we would not, we would have no reaction at A since we have a zero coordinate here. And if our live load is at point G, that would generate us the maximum negative reaction of our um, reaction at A. And that's how um, influence line is used to determine the behavior of reactions or moment at any point. And for our second question, we are asked to draw the influence line of the force in member CI. Now again, as our load is moving from A to E, so the internal forces in each uh, member would also change. So the same procedure, we will place our one unit load at point A and then compute the internal or the member force of member CI. So this um, member here. So we have a two approach in computing for the member forces. We can use either joint method and a section method. However, in this case, to expedite the process, I am going to use the section method or the cut section method. So I will cut at this section, okay? Let's say it's our section 1, 1. So we would have this beam. So we would have this new section here. 
So we would have uh, this section. So our goal here is to compute for the value of CI or the member force of CI. Um, this one is our uh, the member force of HI and this is the member force of CD. But our only concern here is the member force of CI. So this one will be computed by placing our one unit load at of every point on the bottom chord of our truss. So we place first our one unit load at x equal to zero and we all know that the value of Ay is equal to one at x equal to zero. So that means um, by looking at the free body diagram, so we sum up a force as vertical is equal to zero. So count um, upward force are positive and we assume FCI here as tension. This tension because this acts away from the joint. Okay, so we have um, Ay plus FCI. But never forget that we have a one unit load at point A acting downward. So we should include that in our equation. So we have minus one is equal to zero. And then we know that at x equal to zero, our Ay is equal to one. So we have the value of FCI here is equal to zero. Okay. So therefore at x equal to zero, our F CI is equal to zero. And then we move our um, one unit load at point B. So we have this, our one unit load. And this one unit load here is also um, visible in, in our free body diagram. So we have here one unit load. So we can sum up force vertical is equal to zero. So upward force are positive. Now we know when our one unit load at point B or at x equal to three, our Ay is three fourth. Okay, so we have three fourth value of Ay. So we have um, Ay um, plus FCI. So we assume that our FCI here is tension since um, FCI from our figure, it acts away from the joint. So that's only an assumption. So if you come up negative, so therefore we have incorrect assumption. And that is we also have one unit load which is going downward. So that is we have minus one is equal to zero. Ay here is three fourth plus FCI minus one is equal to zero. So we have FCI is equal to one fourth. That is positive. So since we have positive value of FCI, so our assumption that FCI is tension is correct. So therefore, this one is tension. So if that is tension, we have positive ordinate in our influence line. So therefore, at x equal to 3, FCI is 1 fourth. And then we move our one unit load at point C to this point here. And this can also be seen at point C in our free body diagram. So we act or we let that as I'm um, going downward. So we have summation of force vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. So we have, now take note at x is equal to six, our Ay is one half. So we have Ay and still we assume this as tension. So we have positive FCI that is going upward minus the one unit load is equal to zero. And Ay here is one half. FCI here is unknown. And we assume that again as tension, minus one is equal to zero. So FCI is equal to one half. That means since we have positive value, so we have correct assumption of FCI, which is tension. So therefore, this one is tension. So at x equal to six, Ay is one half. And thus FCI here is one half as well. And then we move our one unit load at point D or at x is equal to nine at this point. And we know that at that point we have Ay is equal to one fourth. So since our one unit load is outside of our free body diagram, so we may not include that in this. Okay, so we have to sum up force vertical is equal to zero upwards are positive so we have um, ay now again we still assume that uh, fci here is tension so that is we have plus fci and this equal to zero but ay here is one fourth so the member force of ci here is equal to 
negative one fourth. And that is we have now incorrect assumption of FCI. That means our FCI here is going downward. And since our FCI is going downward, so our member CI experiences compression when our one unit load is at point D. So therefore, we have FCI here as compression. Okay? And to draw the, to draw the influence diagram, if we have compressive um, value of FCI, that means that is negative ordinate. So we have FCI is equal to negative one-fourth. Okay, that would be our sign convention. And then we move our one unit load at point E. So we have at this point, so that means we also have a different value of AY. But previously, we have computed AY when our X is equal to 12 as 0. So we have e equation AY. We changed the direction of our, our FCI here as compression. So we have minus FCI is equal to 0. Since our AY is 0, so our FCI here is also equal to 0. So therefore, at x equal to 12, AY 0, and FCI here is 0 as well. And then we move our one unit load at point F. So our AY at that point is equal to negative 1 fourth. So that means our AY there is going downward. So we can change the direction of our AY then um, omit the negative sign. So we have summation of force vertical is equal to zero. Upward force are positive. We have um, negative AY minus FCI is equal to zero. And we have here AY is one fourth. So therefore net is negative one fourth minus FCI is equal to zero. So we have FCI is equal to negative one fourth. So therefore, we have incorrect assumption of, of FCI. So this should be upward or that is acting tensile, acting away from point C. So this one should be tension. So at x equal to 15, our FCI is equal to one fourth. That is positive because that is tension. And then we move our one unit load at G. So at point G, we have our AY equals to one half okay that is negative one half because um during our computation our ay is acting upward but since we have negative value so that means our ay is going downward okay so ay is one half and that is we can say summation of forces vertical is equal to zero so upward forces are positive so we have negative ay plus FCI is equal to zero. So AY here is one half plus FCI is equal to zero. So we have FCI is equal to one half. So that means we have FCI here as tension. Okay. So therefore at X equal to 18, FCI is one half. So we can now draw our um, influence line for member CI. So at x equal to zero, our FCI there is zero. At x equal to three, our FCI here is one fourth. That is tension. So we have upward. Then we have at x equal to six, our FCI is one half. Then at x equal to nine, we have FCI um, equals to negative one fourth. At x is equal to 12, we have FCI there is equal to 0. And when we have our x is equal to 15, our FCI is 1 fourth. And when our x is equal to 18, our FCI is positive 1 half. So we have uh, this. So this explains that if our one unit load is at point C, and point G, that would give us the highest tensile force of our member CI. But if our um, load is at point D, that would give us a compressive force for member CI. Okay? So that's how you use influence diagram to the analysis of our member of trusses. So I hope guys that you have uh, learned a lot. 
But please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you guys. Stay safe and God bless.